things that it was happening all over the world since the birth. Um, and to start with, when we're looking at um, the Autism Market, it's a good place to start is to look at vegetable oil prices um, as a big driver of cost margins. And so uh, a really an area where all the different oils will compete, uh, vegetable oils will compete um, for demand. What's interesting recently is the developing discount we're seeing with palm oil along the bottom there, really falling away from the, from the main concept of pricing. And this is designed to encourage switching of demand away from palm oil, away from uh, oil such as palm soybean oil, and to the NSF and taking advantage of a relatively cheaper palm oil. Um, we can look at some palm oil data just quickly, and we can see why palm oil is falling away from the main veggie oil concept. And this comes from the Malaysian Palm Oil Board looking at monthly palm oil production in the Barb. And what we've seen, we're heading into the seasonal peak of palm oil production. September was an extremely big month, two million tons, um, which is you know, obviously also increasing. The exports relatively slow to pick up, so the price is disappointing. So the, the wider veg oil complex is trying to stimulate um, some demand. Um, that's not yet showing um, something for example, sluggish in, in international demand. Um, but this data and discount could help also with what we've seen in the Malaysian um, palm oil export tax levels, and that may all help to stimulate production. Moving now to look at the, the, the soybean situation, um, and we would appreciate here that we've got production dominated by both the US and, and South America. 2011 12 was a very unusual season for soybeans because we saw a decline year on year for both South American and U.S. Uh, production. Very unusual for us to see that. Normally, why don't we blame that? We know that's what we saw um, for main plants for, for both the cities we spoke to for the South American drought in 2011 into the, the 2012. And we look now forward to the, the prospects for 2012. Well, and we see the U.S. crop is forecasting lower year on year, although last week in the USDA report, the prospects in the U.S. were revised slightly higher, bringing some supplies the situation. Um, if we then look to the South American crop, um, we've got early hope for a very uh, poor record crop as far as its presence in current record prices. However, there's a very much long, uh, a very long way to go before we achieve this level of South American production. We're done by the grain situation where we can look at the headline seasonal production. Uh, we need to look at this very much over a time in the last three years we're talking um, over the last two uh, three years looking at production levels um, on behalf of the year for both South America and the US. And the dotted line basically re represents where we are in the sense that we've seen different um, grain supplies in the US, seen potential abundance supplies of the South American harvest. And this is going to be a big leakage um, for, for the weather as we go through the northern hemisphere. Um, and in fact, there, the potential is for supply when we, when we get into early 2013, where that's dependent. Now, what's interesting at the moment, I believe, on um, soybeans, and indeed uh, maize as well, um, is the potential for a relatively strong production bottom by, by soybean prices. Cost margin is actually being very well um, supported, um, and this in turn supports the soybean demand. But why is that? It depends on the rod on the surface, but it comes down to the relocation of the individual pricing of the individual elements. So if soybean cost margin is made up of soybeans, and then the output of the oil and the meal, um, in the graph here, it just indexes those prices, top line there is store, store oil, and we can see that coming to the early um, the last um, year or two months that the, the, the relative um, flat profile for the store oil price on this index is largely because of the story of demand shifting away from cheaper palm oil. So palm oil is really being a restriction to the pressure for store oil and other vegetable oil price rises. However, we can still ask what's happened in the meal side of the equation see that soy meal prices have actually rallied to the same extent as the bean. And this basically is a mirror to any meal on the oil price level. You see soybean cost margin essentially comes back to the fact that uh, the same as derived demand curve has turned out as much soy as palm oil has had on the soybean. And so when there is the dominant protein meal, there isn't any other major alternative to the, the, the demand is already strong. Meal production down year on year, and indeed the, the dominant 